Hey everyone, in this video, let's discuss some tips for modifying and adjusting photographs that were captured in midday light. So before we get into the editing, I just want to talk about a couple of tips that are really helpful whenever you're in the field photographing these images. My first tip is to use a polarizing filter or just a polarizer. A polarizer is really helpful in a few different situations, but it's really helpful in photographing landscapes especially. On bright sunny days, whenever you have a bright, you know, sort of dull sky in the background, you can use a polarizing filter to eliminate a lot of those bright sections of the sky, bring back some contrast, and get that blue color that you're looking for in a sky. It's also great for photographing waterfalls or water because you can eliminate any of that glare within the water and get that silky smooth look within the scene. Another tip for whenever you're capturing these types of images is to use a diffuser or a scrim. It goes by either name, but a diffuser is really helpful in evening out the light within a bright sunny day environment. Now this may not be helpful for photographing landscapes, but if you're photographing portraits or small objects or flowers, it's really helpful in ensuring that the light is nice and soft and that you don't get those harsh shadows that come from a bright sunny day. So inside of PhotoRaw here, let's take a look at some editing tips for these types of images. And my first tip is to use the develop tab. The develop tab is a really powerful tool for adjusting your photographs and it can do a whole lot to set your photo up for a bit of style and maybe a few local adjustments. So for bright day images, typically we may have, you know, a sort of blown out section of sky or a bright sky or even just sort of a bright image in general. And so what I typically do is I'll just go into the tone section and we're just going to do everything manually here. These sliders in here are really powerful and can help recover highlights, recover shadow tones, and just do a whole lot to sort of fix your exposure. Now with bright highlights within the scene, I'm going to use the exposure slider to fix them. So if I hold down the J key, I don't actually have any true white, but the sky is just a little bit dull. So I'm just going to pull back on the exposure slider quite a bit here. Let's see maybe a stop and a half or so. We can always sort of adjust it later, but I think a stop and a half is nice. And then from there, I'm gonna pull up on my mid-tones to bring back those middle grays within the scene and make the scene a little bit more illuminated as it was when we first started editing it. Now I may just need to pull back on the exposure a little bit more, or not pull back, but pull up on it a little more and then pull back on the mid-tones a little bit. But you can see even with those two sliders there, if I hit the backslash key on my keyboard, we're bringing back a whole lot more detail in that sky section. It almost seems as if we just basically went into the camera and lowered it down a stop. Now, and this can take, you know, just a little bit of fine tuning, but you can see as we modify these different sliders in here, we can sort of get the look that we're going for right inside the develop tab. Now, in these situations, you always want to bring in some sort of contrast. And so you can use, either use this contrast slider here, and that can increase the contrast, or you can modify the whites and black sliders independently. So the black slider, if I pull this back, is going to increase the contrast and those blacks within the scene. If I modify the whites by pulling them up, it's going to increase the whites within the photograph and sort of illuminate them more, which can actually be helpful in situations where you want a little bit more sort of life to the scene and it's looking a little bit flat. If it's not too overexposed, you can get away with, you know, some whites within the photograph as long as they're not um, blown out and they don't have any detail. So let's just hold down the J key on the keyboard and let's just see about pulling up on these whites just a little bit just like that. And let's just hit the backslash key on our keyboard. 
And already, you know, looking much better. We've sort of recovered those details in the sky. We still have a nice illuminated foreground and we've sort of set the image up to go into the effects tab or go into the local adjustments, whatever it may be, to either style it or adjust those things um, in specific regions. And remember, you can always go back here. Everything's non-destructive, so you can always sort of fine tune as you go. Or if you wanna maybe go back and adjust the exposure a little bit to bring back more detail into the sky, and then you can add more of those midtones. You know, it just takes a little bit of sort of playing around to fine tune it um, and achieve that look that you're going for. But the develop tab, sometimes overlooked, but a really, really powerful tool, especially when it comes to these midday, um, bright sunny day uh, images. My next tip for modifying and adjusting these midday light images is to selectively dodge and burn adjustments within your photograph. And what I mean by that is just to darken and to lighten specific areas in your photograph. So when I when I say dodge, I mean to lighten or brighten, and then burning just means to darken things up within your scene. I just like to think about a piece of paper. If you were to burn a piece of paper, it would darken it, it would turn it black. And so I just always think of it that way. Um, burning is to darken, dodging is to brighten. And so within this scene here, you can see that this bright sort of midday light is blasting in here on this wall and it's sort of taking up the entirety of the light within the scene and we're not really focused too much on this foreground here. So what we need to do to fix that is apply adjustments independently of one another so that we can fix specific areas of the scene. So with this photograph here, what I want to do first is just pull up on the shadow tones. Remember the develop tab is a really awesome tool for just setting your image up for other adjustments. So I'm just gonna go over here to the develop tab and just like we did in the last tip, I'm just gonna use this or one of these sliders here, specifically the shadow slider to just increase some of those darker tones within the scene. And I'm gonna go a little bit strong just so you can sort of see the difference here. I know it can be a little bit too strong, but remember you can always modify it to your taste. So already looking better, but we still have this really bright section up there in the top. So let's go in here to our local adjustments. And let's, with this new local adjustment layer, rename this burn top. With our burn top layer, we're going to burn or darken this top section of our scene. Now we can do it in a couple of different ways. We could either brush in the adjustment. So if we wanted to brush in the adjustment, we would use our adjustment brush. I can grab that by holding down Shift and K on my keyboard. And with my adjustment brush, I typically use a nice soft feathering of around 100. I'll use a, an opacity of around 100% so that I'm painting in the entirety of that adjustment a flow of 100 and then the angle doesn't matter because we're using a round brush. But we can just brush this in now. Actually, let's use the darken preset within our burn top adjustment. So remember we're burning, so I should have chosen darken there. So I've chosen that darken option there to remove exposure and darken things up. So we'll just paint this in here into these sections that we need to modify. And doesn't really matter too much if you go a little bit out the lines just because you know it may blend in a little bit later as we fine tune it. But um, we are just painting in a little bit of that adjustment in this section there. We don't wanna go too overboard, but don't worry too much if you, you know, paint over the lines a little bit. So if we turn this off and on now, it's looking really great. It's sort of modified that section there. It's ensured that it's not too bright within the photograph. And remember, we can always go into this adjustment and we can fine tune any of these sliders to sort of fit whatever look that we're going for. And so if we hit the backslash key on our keyboard, it's looking much better, much more evenly exposed and it's literally just from the develop tab and this one adjustment. Now, another way that you could apply this adjustment here is by using an adjustable gradient. 
So let's just go into our mask here. Let's just reset the mask. And we'll grab our adjustable gradient by holding down Option and K on the keyboard. And I'll use my preset menu to choose linear bottom here. That will allow me to drop this down and it will apply this to the top section there. I'll use this larger handle to sort of position it. And I'm just going to align it sort of with this line there within the building. And let's go and pull this up here, this perforated edge to feather it. And then if we turn this off and on, you know, again, doing a really nice job of just going in there and modifying that top section without modifying too much of the other areas around it. Now with our masks, because we've already created them, we can always copy and paste them into different adjustments. So let's copy this mask, this burn top mask. Let's add an adjustment here. We'll rename this one bottom dodge. And we're going to choose lighten here. We probably don't need that much exposure. We'll mainly just use the midtones and shadows, maybe a little bit of contrast. But now we'll go into the masking options. We'll paste that mask that we just copied and it's obviously copied that one that we just created. So it's applying it to the top. So let's just invert that mask to apply it to the bottom. And this may take a little bit of positioning here to sort of fine tune it. But let's just maybe feather that a little more. And if we modify, or rather if we turn this bottom dodge adjustment off and on, it's doing a great job of modifying that bottom section there. We may need just a little more feathering there just to sort of blend it up. Perfect. And so this is the original. And this is after, and that's just after a few adjustments and sort of modifying the different masks by copying and pasting them. And that was just in the develop tab and then with our local adjustments. So selective dodging and burning is really helpful in these bright midday situations. Now let's take a look at another example where we use a luminosity mask to selectively dodge and burn within our scene. Another method for incorporating dodging and burning into your scene is by using luminosity masks. So in this scene here, we have a really bright sky behind this sort of big piece of machinery here. Let's tame that bright sky by going into our, our local adjustments here. We'll rename this one luminosity mask. Actually, we'll just re rename it lumen. Oops. Where's my keys here? Lumen sky burn. We're going to choose that darken option. Remember darken is going to burn the section in our sky. And let's go in here to our masking options. Let's view our mask here. And with local adjustments, um, if you're not familiar, they're actually not applied to your photograph until you go in and mask them. That's why whenever the, you add on a new local adjustment, the mask view is set to all black. Whenever it's all black, it's concealing the mask from your photo. Whenever it's all white, it's revealing that adjustment onto your scene. So we're all white here. Let's now go into this lumen option. Or, sorry, <laughs> let me go back there. I said that wrong. We're all, we're, the whole screen is black here, so it's not applied to anything within our photograph. So to apply this to the brighter sections within our scene, these bright areas of sky, let's go into the lumen option. You can see that lumen option is sort of instantly tamed those bright sections. And if I go into this view mode here, remember white reveals and black conceals. So it's revealing itself onto all of those bright sections and it's avoiding these darker areas within the equipment. So now what I'm going to do is I'll just pull back on the exposure here to really just bring back that sky that I'm going for. And then let's pull up on our midtones a little bit and our shadow tones to reveal some of those darker areas within the equipment. And so with this one adjustment with that luminosity mask, let's just check out the before and the after. And 
is just incredibly helpful for those situations where you need to target a specific area within the scene or you're not looking to modify the entirety of the photo. Local adjustments and selective dodging and burning are an incredibly helpful tool for bright sunny day images. My next tip for modifying and adjusting these types of images is to use a creative style. Oftentimes with these bright midday light photographs, we have a lot of bright colors and those bright colors can be quite distracting, especially when there's a whole lot of them and they're sort of scattered around. And so in situations like this, I would recommend using a black and white look or using a color grading look to sort of clean up the colors and make them all a little bit more consistent. So let's go into the effects tab here and let's add a filter to convert it to black and white. One of the most popular ones is just the handy dandy black and white filter. And already I'm thinking it's looking much better. You know, it's taking the viewer's attention into those details and those intricacies of the scene. And we're not really too focused on those bright colors. Now within the black and white filter, I like to go to this more menu and I'll just hover over the presets and I'll just use my arrow key to sort of go down and see what works within the scene. And I, I'm a huge fan of the deep blacks. That's probably my most used one, but I also like fade to black. I mean, there's just a whole lot of awesome ones within the scene to just sort of get it going. And remember, there's always this tone section to adjust the brightness, contrast, things like that. There's a toner section to add in a little bit of color if you want. And there's also the film grain section if you're looking to incorporate some graininess and grit. Now besides black and white, another filter I typically use in midday light situations is the LUTs filter. So let's add a filter and let's add the LUTs filter. In the LUTs filter, I'll do the same thing. I'll just go to that more menu, hover over the first one and I'll just sort of scroll down here and check out these different looks. Even that one looks really cool within the scene, but whether it's black and white or it's a nice, you know, color style here, we have a lot of awesome looks within the LUTs filter and they all pack a really powerful punch for modifying the scene there. So let's just use maybe this roam option here. And another option here for the LUTs filter is the contrast slider. If you're looking to bring it a little bit more contrasted, less contrasted, and you also have the saturation slider to convert it to a black and white or to sort of just remove a little bit of that color within the scene and make it a little bit more muted. So when it comes to these bright midday light photographs, a creative style such as black and white or a LUTs filter can really do a whole lot to just bring out the life within these scenes. My next tip for modifying and adjusting these images is to selectively apply detail and other filters into specific areas of your scene to draw the viewer's attention into those areas. So with this scene here, before we get into the style and selectively applying them, let's just go in and we'll do that same method we did in the first tip where we just lower the exposure a bit. Maybe a stop or so, stop and a half. Pull up on our midtones, maybe our contrast there, and we're looking good. Let's just hit the backslash key on our keyboard. Maybe not that bright here. Let's just pull up on the exposure a little bit more, or not that dark, rather. It's a little bit too dark. Maybe so. Just maybe. Let's just do a negative one here. So just yeah, I'll just pull it back a stop. But I think that looks way better for just increasing that contrast and whatnot. So we've set the scene here. Now let's go in and draw the viewer's attention into particular areas of the scene by adding in different effects and filters. So let's go into the effects tab. Let's just add a filter here and let's just add dynamic contrast, a really popular filter for incorporating micro contrast and detail into your scene. And I'm going to use the surreal preset. I know it's intense, but I just want to showcase sort of the before and after. You can always fine tune it to your taste. Um, I know it's just a little bit strong for the demo. So in dynamic contrast here, if we turn this off and on, it's looking really great on the barn, but everywhere else it's just crunching it up too much and we're getting just a little bit too much detail. 
So rather than applying this filter to everything within the scene, let's selectively apply it into just that barn section of the photo. Now to do that, there's a couple of different ways that we can do that. We can go into the masking options here for a dynamic contrast. We can go into this mask AI menu here. We'll choose the architecture option. We'll enable this paint in option so that it paints in that adjustment into the scene and we'll just choose apply. That will mask it out from the areas surrounding the barn so that we just have it applied to the barn there. Another option would be to hit K on your keyboard. That's going to grab you your super select AI tool. We can then hover over different regions of our scene. It will highlight them showing us that it sees those as different sections. We can then select those different sections to highlight them blue. We'll right click and then we can choose different filters and adjustments to apply it to. You can also of course just brush it in manually if you want to brush it into specific areas. So we've applied it to the barn here. One thing I'd mention within these masks, especially if you're applying detail or modifying brightness, is to take a look at the edges of the mask. If they're a little bit too harsh, use this feathering slider here to soften them a bit, and it will blend that edge into the rest of the scene a little bit more. So let's copy this mask that, copy this mask <laughs> that we just created here, and let's use it on a different filter. Let's add a filter here, and let's add the glow filter. I love using dynamic contrast and glow in conjunction with one another because one is really intense detail and one is really sort of intense um, softness. So in the, glow, in the glow filter, geez, I cannot um, say the names of these adjustments today. In the glow filter here, we're gonna go into the masking options and we're just going to paste that mask that we just created within dynamic contrast and we'll invert that mask so that it's applied everywhere surrounding the barn. Now let's just go into this more menu here and let's just go through some of these different adjustments within the glow filter. And I really enjoy these charge more ones, especially this charge more strong. But you can see that it does a whole lot to just bring the viewer's attention into that barn section within the scene. Let's just use this one. And I know, again, it's quite intense, but remember you can always lower the opacity or you can fine tune the actual adjustment itself. And another thing we can do is we can also modify the opacity of the effects tab in general to fine tune both these adjustments at the same time. But you can see with those two adjustments, if I hit the backslash key on the keyboard, it's doing a whole lot to draw that viewer's attention into the barn there and just soften up the areas surrounding the barn. And remember, the opacity slider here will allow you to fine tune those different sections there. And then with this sort of idea in mind, once you have your style, you know if everything's looking okay, but things are looking a little bit too bright in different sections, then you can use those local adjustments and that selective dodging and burning to sort of fine tune those different sections independently as well. So with this scene, that road's looking a little bit too dark. Let's just grab our local adjustment here. We'll use it to just burn this bottom section there. And maybe that area over there. And then we'll just fine tune maybe the mid-tones, that contrast, and then just, you know, sort of play around with the opacity and whatnot just to fine tune, you know, those individual sections there. And this is sort of how you build up those styles and those looks is by selectively applying different adjustments, filters, and just, you know, targeting those different areas uh, within your scene. So I know it may be a little bit intense, but if we get the backslash key on our keyboard, you can see by targeting those different areas, we've really brought a lot of the viewer's attention into that barn region there. So let's just tone down that dynamic contrast maybe a little bit. There we go. And let's hit the backslash key on the keyboard again, and it's looking good. Let's jump into the next tip. 
My last tip for modifying and adjusting midday light photographs is to swap out the sky in your background for a much more interesting one. Whenever we're photographing these midday light environments, we can sometimes be left with just a dull, boring sky background. And so with SkySwap AI, we can easily swap it out for a much more lively uh, backdrop. So let's go in here and let's do that same thing we did in the last tip. And then in the first tip, we'll pull back on the exposure to bring back some of that detail, pull up on our midtones a little bit. Maybe not that much on the exposure there, but just enough to sort of even things out. And I may bring back a little bit of that white there within the scene just to make things nice and, and lively again. But nothing too crazy, just a sort of subtle adjustment there. And let's go into the SkySwap AI tab. So inside of SkySwap, it's going to automatically find the foreground and my background and create that mask. So all I have to do now is just go into the category menu and decide which sky works best. Now I'd recommend finding a sky that is relatively similar to the environment that you're photographing. So if you're photographing on a bright blue sky day, try to find a blue sky that works for that scene. And in the categories, if we go to the Ocudrone Blue Velvet or Blue Street Blue or Majestic Blue, Marshmallow, Moody Blue, all of these categories have a ton of amazing skies that you can use to just bring in a lot of life into your scene there. So let's just try these marshmallow ones here. And within my sky swap AI filter here, I'm just actually going to go to the appearance and I'm going to brighten these skies up just a little bit just to ensure they look a little bit more natural with my sort of bright foreground here. And I may actually warm them up just a little bit as well. And so let's go into the skies here and I really just want sort of a nice subtle one, nothing too crazy. And I'm thinking this one looks really nice in the photograph. I think we may need to swap the position from the left to the right, but I think that looks really nice within the photograph. Just a nice, subtle, very mellow, you know, just to sort of fit the, the scene. I think that works really well. And everything's looking good. We don't have any blown out areas within the sky. And from here, you know, it's really all about modifying the style and going in and getting creative with the look. So if we go into the effects tab, you know, any of those same things we mentioned earlier would be really helpful in, in these types of situations. You know, you've swapped the sky, you've sort of set yourself up to modify it a bit. Now go in, you know, maybe add in a, a LUTs filter or maybe add in an adjustment in certain areas, but it's really sort of up to you now on how to, how to create that particular look that you're going for within the scene. And this photograph, maybe let's just add on a black and white and we'll add on a vignette just to really sort of draw the viewer's attention into that barn section of the scene there. And so we started with this photograph and we ended with this image. So if you're looking for a creative way to edit, these are some tips for adjusting and modifying your midday light photography. I hope you learned a little bit about some tips and tricks for those types of images. Have fun editing and I'll see you in the next lesson.